In the Middle East, I think uh, people are warriors by, by nature. Uh, they're born in conflicts, they live their whole lives in conflicts, and I think uh, martial arts for them is something that suits them perfectly. My parents were Palestinian refugees. They went to Brazil um, uh, early 60s. Uh, I was born and raised in Brazil. Uh, they came back to Jordan. They, they acquired the Jordanian passport and citizenship. I also did that. So uh, basically, uh, I'm Brazilian, Jordanian, uh, but lived all my life in Brazil, and I've been here living it for the past five years in Jordan. My name is Samuel Jamal. Uh, I'm a fourth degree uh, black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I'm a black belt in Judo. I'm a black belt in Karate, Shotokan. I, I needed to defend myself in the streets of Rio. The Rio is not an easy place for you to grow up, especially in the streets. Uh, at the time, it was very violent. So I decided to learn, start learning martial arts in Brazil. And I, since I was five years old, up to now I'm 46, I still train martial arts. I, I decided to, to come here, stay here, and teach jiu-jitsu for the Jordanian people because I thought it would uh, be very nice for them to re learn the true, original uh, jiu-jitsu. And I stayed here and I opened the school in order to teach the real jiu-jitsu, the real Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Overall, it's like a way of life. So I thought it was very important for the Jordanian people to be exposed to that. And I actually felt the difference here. When I first came and I started wrestling with the guys, I thought they were very strong. I, I don't think like the like the Muslim Empire was an empire just by chance because these guys were really really strong since back then. Uh, the Source MMA is uh, located in Rabia, which is West Amman, the heart of the city, and uh, we, our dojo is about 200 meters uh, for training. I, th I think we were like a mini New York here. It's like a melting pot of of cultures, religions, and uh, sometimes we have uh, people in the cage behind me here praying and right next to them uh, people uh, fighting and right behind them people actually doing mixed martial arts and hitting each other and which I think is a beautiful scene to watch and not many places in the world can have this type of uh, scenery. We have uh, foreigners uh, that are uh, non-native uh, uh, Arabic speaking people and uh, because they become uh, Muslim uh, they, they come to Jordan to live in Jordan uh, to live a life of a Muslim and uh, they're also into martial arts and so they come and train with us so and uh, they're like very religious but at the same time uh, uh, very good martial artists. So my name is Ramzi Nabulsi. Uh, I'm from Australia, uh, Melbourne, Australia and uh, okay, I, I, I often get asked why did I come to Jordan, why did I leave you know the land of milk and honey of Australia and come to the original land of milk and honey. Um, and the reason for me was to provide uh, an environment for my children and for my family and myself where we could uh, spiritually grow as, as people. Oh. Oh. Like on? Where is it? There. Oh. Oh. Did you sense me? No, no, no. Not free. Just learning sensitivity and uh, how to stick to your opponent. I feel it was very awkward and, yeah, yeah, but the idea of 
always remaining stuck. So it's like a two-man drill, and then you can start adding strikes and so on. Yeah, you win when you can move your opponents, yes. And you want to do so without having to muscle them. You're just feeling and finding the center. So, I, you know, the good thing about playing with children is you don't you don't become aggressive. So I live in a, a, a little town of uh, Sports City, what's known as Sports City in Amman. It's called Hay Kharabsha. Uh, and it's uh, known for the, uh, the many scholars that live here. So the community is people from uh, the US, the UK, Canada, Australia, uh, India, and locals, uh, local Arabs, uh, Jordanians, and so on. So it's, it's a big mix of people. And so we are every color of the rainbow here and uh, in many languages you know, coming under the, the same banner or the same intention to work on themselves and, and improve themselves. There is a stereotype present within the world that uh, Muslims have a something in their genetics, just they just want to get into violence and uh, they, they have a, yeah, they have a passion for violence. I'm interested very much in the seeking a supremacy in, in fighting in terms, of, uh, the, in terms of the art form itself. So uh, I'm looking for excellence of fighting, uh, which comes back to my, my passion towards, um, I think comes down to something to do with justice and so on. An importance put on being able to stop evil with your hand. When, 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 uh, if, so there's a need to do that. And to do that, I find martial arts gives you the tools to do so. You know, so, um, so I don't find martial arts contradicts uh, my faith at all, and I find it, if anything, it, it's just a tool in order to uh, do what I'm supposed to do, which is, you know, uh, su support what is good and, and stop what is bad. I'm interested in competing at some point in uh, the mixed martial arts uh, arena and other arenas, uh, very much with the intention to dispel any uh, myths within myself, like what I'm capable of doing. Um, I don't want to lie to anyone and I don't want to lie to myself. So uh, I'm, I'm studying a number of martial arts, being uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and uh, um, I come from a background of Kung Fu, and recently I've started Tai Chi, um, much like uh, in the, the same sentiment as uh, Hicks and Gracie had, had said in his uh, documentary Choke. Um, in order to, to believe in, in what you're doing, you, you need to be open to a competition at some point. Go take the back, let go, take the back, go, go, keep going, take it. Two points, move, 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 pass the guard. The, the piece is about women in the, uh, the Middle East, not about guys that feed up. What are you doing? Why is the hand of that leg over there again? The, middle, the bottom of the leg. Go down, go down. Full guard, full guard. Stop, time. Are you okay? No? It's interesting. We have a lot of female BJJ fighters here, more than my school in Brazil, and more than many schools that I see outside. And although the culture here it's a bit restricted towards women training martial arts, the girls here are doing a very good job and this year we made two world champions. Rana, uh, she came to me, she, was, she had never done any sports. Uh, she did, uh, in a, especially any sports that she really had to push hard. And uh, she started kickboxing with me and then she merged into jujitsu 
and last year she competed uh, in the European uh, uh, Championship and the Abu Dhabi World Pro Championship. She won both uh, uh, the World Pro in her weight and open weight and, uh, Abu and the Portugal also her weight without anybody scoring one advantage on her, which is a huge accomplishment for anyone. You know, and she's the first Arab woman to do that. <laughs> I don't know why, but people think that girls should be delicate and they should not be strong. I was never able to follow that concept because I think everybody should be strong because, because you cannot stand up for yourself. Not, 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 not necessarily like being aggressive, but every person should, should be able to stand up on their own. <laughs> My name is Rana Kubaj. I like to do MMA in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, mostly Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and I, I train and compete in Jiu-Jitsu. Look, I started doing competitive fi fighting by chance. Um, I started doing Jiu-Jitsu by chance. I was I was just looking for a workout to lose weight and, and get in shape. Uh, I was a lot overweight, <laughs> and I had to lose some weight. And it was very hard for me to get into working out because I knew nothing about sports. Like. I, I, I try to, to go to the gym. I don't know how to carry the weight. I don't know how to do anything. I try to jog. I can't jog. I can't do anything. I was totally out of shape. I was a smoker. I, I never worked out in my life. So uh, when I, I tried a lot of things for six months. And then I started kickboxing. There was a jiu-jitsu team in my gym. And I kept on looking at them for like two and a half years. And I didn't feel I'm interested. And then the first time I tried it, um, I really loved it. The first time, like the first five minutes, I really loved it. And six months after, um, there was a tournament in Abu Dhabi and I decided to try my luck out and I loved it. So I didn't plan for it. <laughs> okay, so my normal routine is I wake up like 5.30 in the morning, sometimes 6 when I'm really tired. Um, I prepare my food because I have to eat certain stuff. So I prepare my food, I cook whatever I want to cook, whatever. Um, I take like, have to prepare one, two, three, four. I have to prefer, prepare four meals. And that what goes on before train, uh, up to now. I have to eat four meals. So I prepare my four meals and I try to be in the gym like 6.37. I start my uh, morning uh, workout routine, which is basically cardio and strength and weightlifting and strength exercises and whatever, balance, whatever I need to work on. So that goes in the morning. And then um, I go to work, I try to be on time at nine. And I work nine to six. Um, my training is usually at seven, my, next, my second training. So I, I leave from, from work to the dojo, to the, to the gym. Now, I'm actually the first Arab girl to get to win an IBJJF tournament, which is the International Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Federation. These are the tournaments that are organized by the International Federation. So they're the hardest to win. So the Europeans was the first IBJJF tournament I've, been, I've ever been to, and I, the, I'm the first Arab girl to win that one. There are a bit of difficulties, actually. We, the community is a bit conservative about girls and guys um, grappling together or in any form of uh, intimate, like having, uh, being in, in very close distance. So it, it's, it's harder here because girls outside get more opportunities, they fight with guys more and uh, guys are stronger physically, obviously, so that helps you develop your jiu-jitsu more. <laughs> <laughs> my family. The first time, it was they thought it's just a trip. They know I'm, I'm fighting, but nobody took me seriously. And I said, remember, uh, I was pissed off when I lost. And then my father called us like, how did it go? And I was like, I lost. He was like, why are you pissed off? Of course you're going to lose. <laughs> so nobody took me seriously the first time. The second time, um, when I told them I won, it was like a surprise. Everybody was surprised. It's like, how, how can you win in the Europeans? Uh, the, the last competition, the World Pro, I, I didn't see that, I wish I could see that, but it was on TV. So my sisters were telling me, my parents panicked when they saw me fighting on TV. And especially in Jiu-Jitsu, it's sometimes complicated because you can be on bottom and winning, and you, you're the one in control and you're the one who's not in pain or anything, 
but it doesn't look this way. So I was like winning all the fights and they were panicking at home. <laughs> okay, so this is my dad. Hello. My dad. Hello. My mom went away. I don't think that living with my parents' house affects my ability to be a good fighter because I know the Arab world is conservative, but even the Arab world, not every part of the society is as conservative. So my parents have no problem with me going out, training, traveling to compete. They, they, I've, I've always traveled before competitions and after competitions. So for me, it's not a problem. I know it might be a problem for other Arab girls, but for me, it's not. Thank God. Sometimes, um, okay, guys in this country, unfortunately, have the habit of just um, commenting on girls when they're walking. So um, it, it used to annoy me more, actually, before I used to do jujitsu. Now, I, I, for example, I, was, I never would have stopped at an ATM at night to like, withdraw money two years ago. But now I, I don't care. I had to use my jiu-jitsu only once. <laughs> so I was walking down the street and this guy was like, uh, he, he started making comments and I ignored him because this is what we do. We ignore the guys when they do that. And then he, he grabbed my hand. He was like, I, I'm talking to you. So I, I had to use some jiu-jitsu, but not too, too much. Every part of society, they have something against it, okay? which to me creates a platform for them to show freedom, for them to actually go there and conquer their rights and show to people that people are wrong through going to ch uh, con uh, championships, to uh, conquering world championships. And that's what I tell them all the time. Their results in the martial arts is what's gonna make people understand and accept them better.